Twice a year, Dr. John McDougall's Health and Medical Center presents the Advanced Study Weekend at the beautiful Flamingo Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa, California. This event, which is also available to view online, is dedicated to broadening the understanding of plant-based nutrition and conservative medical care. The sold-out 2012 February Advanced Study Weekend was another great success, with an unprecedented lineup of expert lecturers, including keynote speaker Dr. H. Gilbert Welch, presenting Overdiagnosed, Making People Sick in the Pursuit of Health. This is the real question I'm going to be bringing up tonight. This is what IBM thinks would be good, is medical history to alert doctors before patients get sick. And most people read that and they assume, of course, that's a good thing. Right? Of course, let's alert doctors before people get sick. Until you think about it a minute, you're thinking, man, those doctors are going to be alerted a lot, aren't they? They're going to be alerted all the time. <laughs> but as I go through my talk with you tonight, I want you to think about this, because this is a very big presumption that it would be good to alert doctors before you get sick. John Mackey, founder and co-CEO of Whole Foods Markets, and Dr. Matt Letterman discuss Whole Foods Markets' healthy eating revolution. It, it creates hope. It's one thing for me to get up here and talk about it, but when your peers are doing it and being successful, that changes the game, that changes everything. Uh, because you begin to have hope too. And I've noticed in an immersion, something has changed from now when we started doing it a few years ago. The team members that do it now, they are dead serious. They really think they can get control of their lives, and they can. And if you get control of your diet, you can get control of everything. It's like a key that completely can turn your life around. The thousands of, of healthy products that we have at the store. We, teach, we take people through the store, we show them where they are, we tell them when they want to change over the pantry, we fill their carts, and we, and we teach them how to do it. So we're made, taking a lot of these steps that go from reading a book and understanding the program to actually applying it to your life, and we take out a, a big part of the obstacles. Here we see John Mackey moderating a debate between Dr. John McDougall and Dr. Joel Furman, entitled Defining the Best Diet. And in my opinion, these guys share about 98%. They agree on about 98%. But the 2% get you burned at the stake. Uh, <laughs> and, and in some sense, this debate's going to be a little bit about the 2%, because I know that over, overwhelmingly, they mostly agree about things. And uh, uh, so without any further ado, let's just jump into it. Author Lindsay Nixon prepares healthy and delicious dishes in All the Flavor Without the Fat or Fuss. Oh, here's an interesting trick I learned recently. If you chill your tomato before you cut it, the juices don't go everywhere. I, that was like life-changing for me because I usually have tomato guts all over my cutting board. Um, with the tomato, if you... You know, you shouldn't keep them in the fridge because they get kind of weird. They should stay on the counter. But if you put it in the fridge right before you use it and it's still kind of cold, the juices will not end up all over your board. Like, they'll stay with the tomato so you won't have, like, a board that's just, like, covered in tomato seeds and tomato juice. Dr. Michael Greger presents the latest in clinical nutrition 2011. For those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world, so you don't have to. <laughs> every year the talk is brand new because every year the science is brand new, and that's why uh, I'm so excited to be here at these Advanced Studies Weekends because that's what it's all about. Dr. Melanie Joy presents Carnism, the Psychology of Eating Meat. So take a moment to reflect on your thoughts and feelings. I mean, chances are what you thought of just moments ago as food, you now think of as a dead animal. What you just felt was delicious, you now feel is disgusting. Chances are your experience of the meat dramatically changed, even though nothing about the meat itself actually changed. So what is it then that changed? Here, Dr. Doug Lyle presents The Continuum of Evil. People are speaking about this, about the notion of the modern food supply being like an addictive drug. And it is like an addictive drug, so as, as a drug-like effect uh, with very similar neurochemistry to addiction, the, the issue then becomes should we look at it as an addictive drug and act in, in a fury to say stop completely? Or should we look at it more as a normal kind of a problem that is one of successive approximations? 
Dr. John McDougall answers the question, why did Steve Jobs die? I wanted to set the record straight for you, for his friends, and most importantly for his family. The way this all started out, as I mentioned to you a couple of days ago, is uh, Mary and I were in a Verizon store in Portland, Oregon, and a young man picked up a mobile phone and asked Siri, why did Steve Jobs die? And I was reading the biography and I thought, well, I've learned enough things in this biography that make me want to answer that question too and share that, question, that answer with you. Dr. Michael Clapper presents from operating table to dining room table, the evolution of a nutritionally aware physician. In the body, the doctor says, I'm giving this trial an antibiotic to cure his ear infection. Well, that's what you think you're doing, doctor, but you're also killing off the good bacteria, which allows the pathogenic organisms to establish themselves, which injures the gut lining, which allows food proteins to leak into the bloodstream, which flows through the joint memory to suss off inflammation. You can't do one thing. Even taking a vitamin tablet, you're setting off a chain of reactions. Author Kathy Freston is interviewed by Dr. John McDougall about leaning into a new and better life, progress, not perfection. What kind of things do you see happening? What kind of things are you excited about in terms of the future? You've, you've been you know, at this for a while. Mm -hmm. Are you encouraged? I'm so encouraged. Since, 19, no, since 2009, um, Americans are eating 12% less meat. You know, that's huge, 12%, that's, that's in just since 2009. And, you know, in a very short amount of time, um, there's an awareness that, oh, I shouldn't be eating animal foods, you know? It's like- For it, animal rights or health? Both, both, and we didn't have that before. Dr. Joel Furman speaks about removing food addictions to achieve permanent weight reduction. This presentation has a lot to do with the perceptions of hunger and the changing perceptions of hunger on a high nutrient density diet. And, I, and that's the title of a, of a scientific study that was published in Nutrition Journal, May 2010. So whether you're just starting out or already on the path to better health, everyone can benefit from this educational information. And remember to mark your calendar for the September 2012 Advanced Study Weekend. For more information, visit us at drmcdougall.com. That's drmcdougall.com.